Oh, hello. Welcome to the Dream Labs. Uh, Dr. Contrast here live. I hope everything's well. And uh, Shadow, very good to hear from you. Uh, good to hear you and hope all is well. And uh, you have a good day. So far, so good. But uh, I just thought we'd go back in today and uh, brought back some ancient history from last Tuesday's lesson. I just want to go back in again. And for the for, before we begin to go to the part two process here, to kind of carry on this whole process of uh, contour and surfaces, went back in just to bring some review pieces back to let you know that I think one of the, one of the things I really want to stress in, in this one in the final lesson in contour and surfaces is the absolute necessity to understand how volumetrics work along with contour and light source and everything else. It all begins to come together here uh, before we move on to some of the more sensitive sketch um, uh, lessons and so forth that are coming in the future here. So um, very, very quickly, we, last week we did a whole series of little volumetric studies and began to combine them and uh, put them together with the idea of, of, of going back in and cutting uh, contour onto them and uh, surface work. Uh, the red pen will represent the contour work and then obviously the uh, blue pen sketch is the actual volumetrics in, um, uh, involved uh, in, in, in essence. Notice here we've got spherical forms to cylinder to conical shape to truncated to cone and back to cylinder again. So all these combinations begin to really work uh, well with understanding, okay, now that I've got these forms coming together, hey, how are Pixel, how are you? Good, uh, good to see you, hope everything's good. Just go back to a real quick review before we start again with the lesson plan today. And I want to stress uh, throughout the course of uh, the next hour or so how critical it is to understand what contour means in terms of working with volumetrics and light source and everything else we're dealing with here in the past few um, uh, during the, during the past few lessons. So um, I really want to concentrate today on doing, again, some very lucid sketches, nothing really formal or fancy, just going back into some basic drawing exercises and let you see how it all begins to function in terms of once you once you get the shapes down and then begin to put contour onto it and building these surfaces, how it all becomes really interesting. Needed some inspiration on Tuesday. Hey, how you doing there, Bets? Good to have you on board. Everything well in the beautiful downtown Chicago? Uh, thank you so much for joining us here. Um, you need inspiration, so do I. So we're all in the, in the same boat, Bet. So good to have you on board here. Um, so these, again, are very lucid sketches in terms of, again, back to a rectangular form onto a, on a conical cylinder shape and so forth. And I wanted to labor a lot of points here. But again, going, getting down to, I think one of the things I did not discuss last week that I want to make sure we discuss this go around is the absolute necessity to not hesitate when you're down a sketch, to not, not question what you're seeing. Uh, to not uh, second guess it or de-evaluate it or begin to take it lightly or tritely. Uh, I think it's much more interesting, for example, lay down the drawing, begin to look at it and say, okay, how do I analyze this shape? Is it, is it organic? Is it sheer? Is it a compound form in terms of a lot of undulation? Is it very sensitive? Is it, is it very straightforward? Those are the thinking process elements that really make a huge difference when you begin to put together the actual series of sketches that you deal with uh, to kind of come to a final conclusion. And again, I've always been a real big fan Hugely stressful. Uh, it's not stressful. Hugely stressing the fact that uh, concept sketching should be that. It's a concept. It's an idea. It does not have to be perfect. It doesn't have to have all the things lined up and become absolutely pr pristine and exactly what you need to have done. I've said this before in several streams, and I'll say it again before I begin. The most unique thing about drawing, as far as I'm concerned, or conceptualization is you might have a vision to begin with, as I said this last uh, Tuesday, um, uh, last week, on our on our program. You might have, I've always stated, for example, I've been taught the no from the end from the very beginning. Now, to clarify that doesn't mean uh, from start to finish it's perfect. But I have a vision in my mind about what I want to accomplish. But as I go through the process, those things will change and adjust. That's the, that's the journey that leads back and forth with creativity. That's a conversation going on between yourself and, and creative force that's driving you from point to point to point to point. So again, it's always interesting to know that very thing. Start out your sketch rendering process with an idea in mind or a vision. And if it changes as you go through it, to me, that's creativity telling me, no, it's not this, it's that. Go this route, go that route. It's very, very sensitive from that point of view. So what does it mean? And the bottom line, that drawing has always been to me a process of thinking. Not visualizing, but really listening to the voices that you begin to go through and maybe begin to discuss as you go through a creative process. So there we go. There's the first page. And then the last one we did, a little bit more sensitive in terms of what a form would do. It's a more, much more of a compound shape. And what I did not do, and I want to add here today, is notice how all these drive lines go back to, let's put this in, in place. There's a central vanishing point right there. All these sectional lines, look what happened, these contour lines, pardon me, go right back to that. Look how they're all driving back. In perspective, I made a comment last week in this particular sketch that what happens, if I turn this around a little bit, what happens is we're going to pick a station point, for example, as to where we're standing, which in essence is right here. We're going to stand right about there. That's where I'm standing and looking at this shape. 
No, when I said when I when I said last Tuesday, I want to make sure we clarify this too. If, if you move to the left of the form, then it begins to fall open. As you move to the right, it begins to fall open. Why? Because each section or each contour is moving away from your station point. So notice how they open up. Look how wide this section is and how narrow this one is. That's what I'm trying to get at. That's that's learning how to see how things begin to function from the point of view of both volumetrics and contour work. So it all becomes part of the formula, a complete mix of getting things done here. So that was the first page in review. Then we went through a little more of a compound form here, kind of automobile or vehicle study. Notice even in an elevation, you can do the same thing in an elevation with a vehicle study. We're standing right here. Look how tight that section is. Meaning, for example, look how tight that is right in there. As you move away, look how that section opens up and begins to expand. And by the same token, when you go to the left, how it begins to open up and expand. That gives you a sense of form and a sense of drama and a sense of contour. And quite frankly, the more you understand what contour does and volumetrics and, and working with it, the stronger your renderings are going to become. I mean, your illustrations become bulletproof. They're, 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 they're funded on truth. And you can't debate the truth. You get into trouble when we start guessing at this stuff. So really understanding from the fact that, yes, you, you have a vision. It'll change it to go through the process. But it has truthfulness as it goes through the process. So you can't lose. Uh, a little three-quarter study doing the same thing again. Look how look how this tight how tight this section is here. As it begins to move away, how it opens up. Again, that's because I'm standing right about here. And that section of those contours are falling away. Uh, from my uh, from my station point, and what I've, I've said a couple times here, section. Let me let me clarify that before I move on to my little, the sketch demonstration here today. What I what I see is, and, I, and I'm not um, I certainly not disturbed by one or the other, but oftentimes we take section and contour and put it in the same format. Yes, in essence, that's correct. You can use it as a section. You can use it as a contour. But I'm more inclined to think that a contour is more surface generated. It's on the external side of things. Or the section is when you cut through something and show the inner mechanics and the guts and the, and the, and the workings of something, that's a lot more sensitive. So I think in our, ses our session today and last Tuesday about uh, getting the contour and surfaces, notice contour and surfaces. And that really tells the story about we're going to stay on the, on the exterior of things and just go through the contours. And it really begins, again, I go back to before I started, a very simple triad that we talked about last Tuesday as well. That line is the surface. As surface is to form. Line, for example, the contour, is to surface, which generates a surface, which will then generate completely and forevermore a really neat form. So let's go ahead, let's go ahead and dive into this thing with that little review. Let's move ahead here as quickly as we can. I just want to go through some real fast sketches here and we'll show how it all begins to function. First of all, I'm going to start just go through some real fast strike lines here. Just to kind of lay in just a very simple series of sketches here. Let's kind of round this out, bring it back in. Put a little bit of section on the end here. Let's take that through. Nice and light, just nice and easy, just drawing through the shape itself. Coming back in, reinforcing some of these, these drazer lines. Coming back, get a little roundness. Notice, I didn't hesitate, for example, in this case, to come back in and really build that cylinder with this, again, volumetric cylinder into that long form, the rectangular shape, and change its character by being a little rounder. I'm gonna come back in here. Let's break it up a little bit. Let's go back to a parabolic curve. Let's do this. Break that in. Draw through that and break it out again. Take it right through. Let's put a little bit of section in here. Drop it or contour it back. Let's open that up a little bit. There's a little bit of a section change or a contour change right there. Now again, into here. So let's split it into that and then into this and into that. There's a real fast, really quick little volumetric study. Again, surface round, into the round, into vertical, into parabolic curve, into this shape coming around the shape itself into a cut contour right there. And then let's add this. Add a little bit of a contour line through here. A little bit of a cut line. A little more specific, there it is there. Let's run over the cross the top as I move the pad here, pardon me. Come back in and put a little bit of depth in this line so we know it's a little bit of a hollow. So there it is. Now, when you get to that station right there, now you've got a whole series of things to deal with in terms of very complicated form. Now the, the task is to come back, let me just change gears here. The task is to pick some points of reference. One, two, three, maybe four. Turn it over, draw right through it, come right back down the line, into this, underneath, out of that surface, and then into the contour. Over the top again, domed, into the body of the form, underneath, into the cut, following that same pattern, and into the lower. Again, and through here, notice, now it starts to really change. That's softer. Over here, just a little bit of that dimple into that element flat, into this, 
into that undercut right there. It's going to come underneath, roll out, and come back to that normal surface, project that down, and there it is there. Now, the last one, very complicated. Let's do this. Comes across, rolls over, cuts underneath, picks up that vertical, comes out in the same angle here, that little flat, and then rolls in and comes up right underneath the shape. All of a sudden, I'm beginning to describe how that form is really working. Going the other way, not a problem. It's really consistent. It's around here, and then a cut, draw right through it. There's my longitudinal contour right there. Runs right in front of the body of the form. Now here, a little difference. Let's drop this just a bit. Do the contour. Inside, notice how it steps back because of that little offset. That steps back because of that offset right in there. So all of a sudden, these things begin to really begin to notice how each shape will determine, or each, um, for example, uh, for each individual volumetric we're dealing with, it'll begin to describe what the shapes are doing. Now, very quickly, let's just do this. To prove how that works, let's put a light source on it. If my light source is up here from the left-hand side, now I come back in here very quickly and begin to tone it in the shadow. This tells me contour really helps me to determine how to render these guys. Come back in through here. Notice a little softer on the, away from the light source, into that little razor line, back out of it again, into that highlight or that shadow right there. And come back in again, contour, back out of this. And again, right down that fillet line, notice, a little bit of contour. Notice how I'm leaving a little bit of that, that paper to come through there. Let's turn the corner here just for a moment. And then take that right out of the light source, right back to it, for example, and put those stroke patterns right back in toward the light source and just come right across that shape very softly. A little more detail on here, a little more hard line in through here. Each one of those contour lines have now helped me. Oh, just add just incredible, neat stuff to it. A little more contour in here. Since it's domed, that's what that's going to do. Notice very quickly. Just describe that shape ever so rapidly. And again, go back again. That same contour, a little softer in through here. Take it right through and eliminate it. Pick up a little bit of a line weight. And again, down below. Just a bit more, carry that on through. Pardon me, I turn the paper around here just to kind of notice. This pattern I'm working with right now is right back. Let me turn this around here. That pattern is coming right back to my light source. So it all begins to work together. Now look how those contour lines help me to describe that shape very, very quickly. That's the value of putting together what I refer to as contour and developing surfaces. It's, um, it's not just the actual shape you're working with. It's how that shape is influenced and just indicate wherever the light source highlight there, Little highlight there and again outside the form just a little interest there it is and there it is that stuff means absolutely nothing it just looks cool so you can, again it just reinforces the whole principle here of why this whole power side of life or, or seeing things visually is so powerful once again let me kind of reinforce those sections are our private contours it's over the top over the top over the top over the top let's add one more here too just to get that shoulder to work out of that inside the contour Back out again and add another one over here just kind of fill it up just a bit more into radius into the undercut back out again and right through i mean there you are that just tells a story and notice again the volumetrics the cylinder the rectangle and a partial a partial portion or a secant of a sphere help me determine where the contours were which in turn helped me illustrate the entire form under a light source which is up here it comes up from the left hand side and pulls right in that shape. So let's move on here. If you have any questions, feel free to ask here and I'll do the best I can to kind of watch the screen and address your questions here. Let's go back and do a couple more little, little rough sketches here. This to this. There's a little simple rectangular form first. Let's kind of break this out. Let's get the shapes to work. Run across, run it across. Let's break it a little bit. Let's put a radius in this thing. A little softer. Take that through in a crown. More vertical, take that through, cut it back, cut it back again, and there's that basic shape. Let's kind of put this into it, a little bit of a contour. Let's do this, cut that back just a touch, and add a little bit of a detail or some sort of a, a sketching piece up front. Let me reinforce that sketch just a little bit here. There I am. There it is underneath. 
nice and loose, just really quick sketches. Nice, nice and fluid. Nothing really kind of tinned down. Nothing fancy. Just looking at a thought process here that'll really help us here. Look, there's a basic form right there. Again, once again, looking at this shape, we've got we've got a rectangular form into a very thin rectangular form into a, maybe a, a truncated tri uh, pyramid base of some sort. But again, let's put some sections into this thing. See how it begins to function. First of all, I'm going to run along horizontally, kind of right down that center line, and do that. Pick up that contour, that contour, and that contour. Into the flush surface here, down, inside, back out again, and right back to contour, underneath, angle. Again, underneath, again, underneath, angle. Across the whole section, above the top of the surface, and the radius. I'm going to cut one there, and put a contour there. I'm going to bring this in, roll it over, roll it over, cut it in, cut it in, back out again, back out again, underneath, and again, underneath. Let's just look at that. Look at that. Look at that starts to do. Does that help at all, gang? Look how those surfaces begin to really unite in terms of, now what happens in the fillet right here? Very interesting. It's come across here very lightly. That fillet comes along here and does this. The way to describe that is best to do this. Come across the horizontal, in, break, in, break out here, come right around the corner, radius that thing, and run it right into that contour right there. Look how that, that fillet, that area right there, really helped to describe what that shape is doing. I hope this is making sense, okay? I'm, I'm not trying to go too quickly here. I want to make sure we get across how critical it is to understand how three things working in harmony produce powerful sketches, ideas. Those three things are, number one, understand how volumetrics work. Number two, how to work with contour and surface work. Number three, what a light source will do on those products so that we can begin to put a really strong section together or a strong uh, design statement. Very simple. That's it. That's all there is to it. Let me just do this again. Let's go through a nice little rendering exercise, too. Let's bring the light source in, in this case, from the right-hand side. I come from the right-hand side. Now I'm going to be a lot more shifty. I'm going to come back in through here. Start on the far side here. Pick up a little bit of surface. Run right through it. Into that fillet. Let it go. And again, run the stroke pattern right back to the light source. In the shadow here, cut that in. That negative. Again, into this negative underneath. And a very few simple strokes into that fillet. Again, around the corner. And again, that shadow. A little bolder. And shadow here. And up on top. Where that fillet is, run that right back. Run that right back. And again, right back into that fillet. Take underneath here again. Go from dark to light to pick up some of that reflected light. And just do this. Let's just settle it down here. And to ground it, there's my shadow. And how cool is that, gang? You've got all things working together. All 12 cylinders are firing here. Because why? We understand the process of how to work with simple things that make a huge difference. Fill it change here, a little more contact. And let it fade. Get a little bolder maybe through here. Put a bit of shadow underneath this little recess here. That's that. And a little bit of contour here. And again, around the bend, highlight. And the highlight. And again, reflected light. And there it is. Look how that shape just falls together. I mean, it's it's automatic. And I'm sorry for making that redundant form there, but it's just so automatic. You, you understand why these contours work the way they do. They just harmonize certain things. And it really comes off nicely in terms of really straight out. Yeah, thanks, Shadow. It does come off the page. And again, why? Because of the three triads working together. They're all working in harmony. You can't separate them. And I think the thing that I want to get across to the audience here, if you're tuning in, and thank you for doing so. So how do you apply the contour lines without drawing them? Um, well, I'll go back to that in just a second here. You, 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 you visualize it, I think, uh, Shadow. And it, once, once you see these things happening, you can begin to visualize what these elements are doing when, when you're drawing certain things. And then you take it from there. It just becomes extremely paramount. So 
Uh, they, that's part of the answer right there. So here we go. Oh, or, or is that design trick to show them this? Is, yeah, it's, it's, it's part of a little bit of both. It's a little bit to show you a little bit of the design process, but at the same time, the real function of, of going into this contour series is to understand that you, know, you have to know what you're, you have to know and see what you're drawing and working with to really kind of deliver a, a very good final sketch rendering here. So let me just sharpen the stick for a second here. Let's go back a little further here. Let's go back and do another sketch here. So I hope that answers your question. Does that make sense? Yeah, it really does. It, it understand, you have to understand what you're looking at from the point of view of what you see in your mind's eye. What you're conceiving in your mind has to be extremely clear. That's the validation of the comment I made earlier in the stream. That it's always good to know. It's really interesting to have a vision, to know the end from, your, from the very beginning. What are you working with and what's, what's the real product that you're after here? So here we go. It's going to go back in again, a little bit around, take that through, round on the end. Real loose. Just a real fast couple of sketches here. Just laying down a shape. And there it is. Now, there's the basic body of the form. That's what you again began to see. So now, um, next step is to kind of come back in there just for what it's worth. Let's pick some some lead points here. Let's cut one through here, there, there, and there. Let's go through four sections here, or four contours. Up on top, up on top, up on top, up on top. Now through the body form itself. Let's go through here. Your recess in that. And there it is. And through here, let's add something here. Going to get a little bit of interest to it. Let's take this back in the recess. Now it comes back in into that area, right through the center line of that circle, back out again to that point of there. See how I projected that line through? You get that reference to work. There's my there's my depth right there. That's how it begins to function. Now again through here, down underneath, down and underneath. Let's kind of clean this up a little bit here. Pardon me. Contour lines. Those, there are the vertical contours coming across that shape. Now let's go a little bit horizontal. Pardon me, but I sharpen the stick a little bit here. Let's come right through this whole circle. Let's go back through here, a little round, follow that shape right there, round into that, into the inside, across that section, project over, out of it, and right into that form. And there it is right there. Is that cool or what? That's that's describing that shape. That now becomes a blueprint for me to begin to render and understand what the shapes are really doing. Let's add another little compound piece here to this. Let's do this in the end. Do this. Put that up on top. And run a section right across the top here, or contour rather. Through here, down, over the top again, into this, into that, Again, across that surface and into that. All of a sudden, oh, that whole shape really comes together. Now I'm understanding what that form is doing. Really know what I'm looking at here in terms of shape. So let's do this. Reinforce it just a bit. Again, let's bring the light source in from the left-hand side. Let's put a shadow down here so I can see where I'm going with it. very quickly. Now, same thing. Away from the light source, tone it. Right back into the direction of the light where it's coming from. Into that fillet. A little bolder. Away, side of pencil. I've always said, this is really kind of a cool trick too. A side of pencil to me is like working with a paintbrush. It's rapid, it's quick, it's extremely effective. A bit of shadow underneath here. I mean, look how quickly I'm getting that shape to work. Underneath here. A little bit more tone. Really bearing down on it because the deep shadow underneath that lip. Bring it out of the light source. Curl it. Back in through here. Same thing. Part of it is I turn this around a little bit. And there it is there. And I come out of it. Same thing. 
And again, across, let's get that fillet to work. Across the top of that guy, a little bit more tone back in through here, away from the light source, a little darker. And let it fade coming right across the actual shape itself. Elevator where the light source is coming from, there, over to there. Again, turn this form around. Let that go to paper and bring that right around the bend. There's my fillet right there. That comes in, does the job. I have a little bit of tone in here. Pardon me as I move around here quite a bit. Again, each one of these stroke patterns on the side of that pencil is going right back to where that light source is coming from. Look at that shape. I literally was about to sleep, but I saw the big dock streaming. <laughs> hey, hey, Pixel, good to have you on board. Hey, hi, Brett, how are you? I'm almost uh, feeling late. No problem. Is this making sense for you so far? Brad, let me show down here. Let me slow down here just for a little bit and uh, and make sure we are communicating well with you. I'll literally about to sleep, but I, yeah, it's a good deal. So far, so good. We're going back again just to, to, to review a little bit of things here for you, Brad. Is we're going into, again, those three things we talked about last week. Uh, again, uh, volumetrics, putting shape together or volumes together, will create contour work, which again will create confidence in our, our final sketches and what we render with. So, how are we doing? So far, so good? Let me do this. Let's put a little shadow on this guy. Let me separate this thing so we know where the light source is coming from. It comes underneath. Put a tone down. All this does is help settle the shape. Yes, it's critical, it's powerful, but at the same time, it really tells us a neat story about what happens here. A little bit more tone in the shadow. Good question is this. Why am I using that little razor right there? Why that return and out? That's picking up that corner right there. It comes around the bend, picks up that shape, and then onto the shadow. That makes sense? Once again, that little return right here. Let me just put a little more density in the shadow here. And while I'm at it here, let's kind of pull this into play a little deeper. A little more line weight change. Cast a shadow across the corner there. What that light source is going to do just catch a little bit of that upper cone in that back corner and just cast a shadow on it right about there. There you are. Now, notice, once again, makes sense to me. Oh, that's great. Very good. Thank you. This little razor right here tells me that the light source is coming from the left-hand side. It's pretty direct. It's in that direction right there. But it's what it's doing, that little catch right here. That's coming from this upper corner. So it comes in. In and kicks out again and picks up the rest of the form as we go through the whole process. Those of you who are with us, for example, when we did that whole conversation on a light source, uh, we're going to see how that works. Let me just do this very quickly here so we can kind of see where the contour lines are working. A little bolder, a little bolder, and a radius, into the radius, into the body side, into the radius, and so on. And then coming across the horizontal, really critical. Across, inside, across the center line, and then right across in the body of the form. And then underneath, and then underneath. There's that, there's that whole contour series, again, developing the shape for me automatically. It just falls right into place. Hope that makes sense. So let's move along here. Let me go back in, sharpen this pencil for a future reference. Let's change this up just a bit here. I gotta get these guys all squared away. Let's come back in through it now. Let's go back in again, nice and loose. Just draw through it, draw through it. Looking at perspective first. Basic rectangular form, just blocking it in. Now let's come back in and break it up. Pull it off just a bit. Radius it off right here. A little bit around the, on the top here. Bring that into play. Just gonna do this and change it just a bit. Be a little rounder with this thing. There we are, that's better. Now let's recess this guy. Let's drop this thing right in. Let's bring it right back up and then tangent and then bring it out again. Let's split it. Go right through it. There's a pretty loose little sketch here of just taking a certain thing like a rectangle. And begin to break it up. Let me just tighten that down just a bit here. 
Real fast ballpoint pen sketches on this good old fashioned bond paper. That's it. It's coming across into the recess. And there it is. There's the actual form. We just generated that very, very quickly here. So there we are. So now we're going back. Let's, let's start up on top here and get a nice uh, process started here with this, this counter. Let's draw right through it. Let's do this first. Draw right through it. Now let's drop it in. Into the drop. Into the valley. Draw through it. That gives me a point, a station point to come back to. Up and over. There's the upper contour right there. Very quickly and easily done. Now let's come right down. Let's go the other way. Let's go back across the top of this guy. Come across here. Start there. Across. Into the fillet. Downhill. And again, let's add one here. And let's add one there. Same thing. Into the fillet. Downhill. Into the fillet. Downhill. Notice how I'm leaning that section or that contour back because notice I'm moving away from where I'm standing. So that, that section, that contour is going to bend a little bit. So let's go back over here, up on top, over the top, into the recess, and through. Again, over here, over the radius, into the recess, follow right through. And very quickly, boy, just like that, I've just discovered a huge. Now let's go back and do this. Let's run right, let's, let's run a line through here, run it through, kick it in. Come across, kick it out, and right through. Look at the contours we've set up as a result of that simple shape. It all of a sudden takes on a whole different personality, incredibly different. So once we have all, all that put away, let's just kind of put it back in here. Uh, part of me is I just grab a little, bit of, a little bit of tone here, light source. I'm going to go very quickly here, just going to get a, a surface put together. Light source coming in from the left hand side, obviously. A bit of tone change. Come across this fillet. In the shadow. In the shadow. Back to light source here. Pardon me, I'm going to pick this up a little more depth in this thing. Across this fillet. Up. Around the bend. And again, away from the light source. Turn that right back into the direction of the light source. That stroke pattern is going right back to where the light source is coming from. So there I am there. I am there. I kick this in. Let's put a shadow in place here. Let's highlight that little recess. Kick that through. Back out again. I mean, I turn this around. Let's tone the shadow in here. So, pardon me, as I just kind of fill this in, and we'll complete the scenario. The shadow kind of helps me to flatter the form and keep it safe. And then run underneath here. There we are, gang. What do you think? Simple? Get the point across? Okay, okay. there we are. Let me see us do this here. Get this little, one more time, a little more fillet change here. Bring it uphill just a little bit, just to kind of define where that form is. Let's take that little bit of a ledge and cast a shadow inside this form here. Notice how I left a little bit of highlight right there? That's reflected light right in there. That little portion right there. And I didn't fill it in, just kept it nice and simple. And there it is. So there's a there's a family of forms here. Let's do this. 
what it's just kind of combine them all together here. A, B, C, and now into D. That, that combines them all together. Let's just put a little composition in here, but it's worth. A little composition together, bring those families all in one place. Gonna reinforce this in the line. Take that right through and show us where the light source came from. There, there, and there. And right across the form, there's a really exciting little sketches. I know. Let me rephrase that. Pardon me. Looks kind of floaty somehow. Yeah, it floats all right. It's because you're getting again a little bit of lift of the shadow right here, because again, we're picking up this corner, which is here. And then that corner, which is there, and all of a sudden you get this little return razor. This gives a little more elevation to it, um, uh, Brad. That's what we're after here. So that's pretty interesting how that, again, notice each one of the examples. Uh, they're not great sketches. They're intended to be really interesting. Hey, Chip, how you doing, man? Good to see you. How's everything? Um, going through a real quick review here in part two of working with contour and surfaces. And each one of these sketches are built on a very simple triad. Number one, understanding the understanding of how, um, yeah, you got chocolate again. Very good. Don't forget to save me some. That's cool. Um, very interesting, gang. Um, each one of these sketches are a product of three things working in harmony. Number one, the sense of volumetrics, how to work with it. Number two, understanding the contours of what you're generating. And number three, creating a form out of what you're seeing here. And again, go back to last week's stream about the, the, the real important uh, statement was line is the surface. A surface is to form. Lines, for example, the sketch, create surfaces, which create forms. And then contour helps us get there very, very quickly. So there we are. So let me just sharpen these sticks for a second here, gang, and we'll hold on for any, anybody, any questions or concerns before I move on here. This has been helpful to you. Just a nice series of little thumbnail sketches, and we've got some things rolling here. Sign this guy to make sure I'm guilty. And there it is. There it is, there's there's phase one right there. Uh, let's go back and do a couple more here. We've got some time here. And, uh, let's go back in here. Let's just get some really interesting little lucid shapes here. Again, just very quick freehand studies. Ballpoint pen, generate the shape. Get this cleaned up a little bit, pardon me. Here we go. Nothing really handy here in terms of what the product is. I'm just trying to demonstrate what, what contour will do when you begin to generate certain shapes or certain forms. And it all begins to function together. And notice the round, the round, draw through it, a little bit of re recess there. There's a simple little contour right there. There's a simple little concept sketch right there. It's just generic. It's just something that happened. All of a sudden, we just put it down. Uh, again, I mean, I, before I started here today, I really made a point out of commenting on the fact that I'm not going to be doing anything that's particularly formulated, nothing fancy. Just an interesting thing, how it all begins to work together here. Oh, Brett, actually made that link. Please don't click it. <laughs> would these objects react if there was more than one light source? Uh, yeah, they would. But I think that's a dangerous thing to play here, Brett. Um, I think in every given situation, uh, you always really begin to really favor what the light source, the primary light source does. Now, there's a lot of things that will take place within that light source phenomenon, but I think it's always good to really hone in on one good light source to make sure that the form you're dealing with is solid or the, you know, the object you see. Uh, we'll get into that more later down the line here with more light source um, um, uh, lesson plans and the like, but I think I really recommend you would really, really take advantage of staying with one light source here. Let's put some contour in this thing now. We'll come right down the line. Let's run across here. Well, we're going to pick a series of spots. Let's run through here. Let's run through here. Let's run through here and down through here. Let's come right on the form. Into the radius, into the radius, into the flat. Notice how it reverses itself there, interesting. 
And this comes right across, it comes right down the, the surface right here. Now let's go the other way. There's one, obviously. There's a second one right there. There's a third one right here, up a little bit of a step, and then right through. And again, there it is. That's a series of forms that are just enough to kind of let's, let's add one through here so you know what that where that does. That comes in, and then there are my contours, both in the vertical, which is here. There's a little step again, there, up, and across, and around, and around, and around, and so forth. Across, form, chamfer break, into the flat. And there it is. There's a series of contours that really help me describe what that shape is doing. So the three-point lighting doesn't work on a drawing. Um, I, I would not do that. I mean, three, um, and again, I'm not trying to be judgmental here, Brad. Um, I think it's much better. Pick one light source that you know it's either directed from the right or from the left um, and put it right on an object and always drive your shadows back into the picture plane so that it doesn't become an interference uh, when you begin to el um, uh, illustrate the actual sketch itself. So I really have a strong recommendation at this time where you are, uh, stay with that one simple light source. It really makes a huge difference. Three-point lighting doesn't, three-point systems, I've never used that in product design. A three-point, we've taught about it, we um, understand it fully. But um, early on in my career, I did a lot of work, for example, in three-point three studies for um, kitchen products. And it was really interesting how um, the, the actual viewers did not understand three-point perspective, so they thought that the forms were distorted. And uh, that taught me a big lesson right there. So I'm, gonna, I'm staying with a very typical two-point perspective or one point and with a good single light source to make sure we telegraph the ideas we're after here. Let's put a bit of light in this thing now. Come back in and just tone it. Come back on top here, underneath. Light source again from the upper left. Run it across. Across the entire shape. Very strong razor line here, so let's do this. Let's get that guy to really read. Again, line weight, real strong teeth back here. Indicates a little bit of the shape, a little bit more shadow underneath here. Back up, and right back into the light source. And then through here, pardon me as I turn around here. A little darker down below, into that area, into that. Bring it up, into a little bit of the highlight, break it across. Line weight again. And if this is vertical, keep it so. Real lucid sketches here, nothing fancy. There it is. Look how that helped those contours. Help me describe that shape. Making sense? So far, so good, gang? That's where we're after. Let's go down the line here. Let's go back over here. Nice little round shape. Draw through it, connect the dots. Connect the dots, come off the back side here with a little bit of a handle graphic. Little thumbnail sketch. There we are right there. Just basic shapes. All set. So far, so good. Very good. So again, sphere to cone and again rectangular shape. Now let's put a little bit of let's put some section in this thing, or contour rather. Let's come across the top of the brow here, right through the center line of this guy. Let's get this described here. It comes across into that recess back out again and right through that contour. There's my circle right there. That's what I'm drawing through. Into the vertical. Across up on top of that shape. Again, maybe another form in through here. Up over the top of that form creating that whole count right through there and down through here into that area into that area right there now into here come across the other way go all through it pick up that area right there into the handle into the recess 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 
Notice, once again, I drew through it to get the horizontal and drew through it to get the vertical. So that now tells me it's here. And again, I can come down tighter across that piece into that and pick up that shape right there and run that right through into that recess, recess, recess. Look how that all worked to help you guide that form. I don't understand what I'm looking at. Um, it's just a sphere and a comb. It's like a handheld, it's just like a little handheld hair dryer. It's just a compound form, Brett. Does that make sense? I'm just building shapes. Nothing's really, I'm not doing a product. I'm just trying to combine forms or shapes, for example, in geometric solids and begin to work on them in terms of uh, creating contour. So if you can think of this as like being maybe a handheld, uh, uh, like a little hair dryer of some sort, that might help you put it in context for you. Make sense? Let's go back and finish this out. Let's go back the other way around the handle into that form, a little recess back. One across. And then resets back. So now all of a sudden, I've got a really good build system there of how to work with this shape. Now it does. Very, very good. All right. Let's just kind of ink in a little bit more for you. Get the contours down. Get this into place. And you'll see it when it comes together when you start to put some light source on this thing. Comes in. Comes through. Comes through. I'll probably just turn this thing around here. Now you get the forms like this. Really interesting. How to, how to delicately go through them to illustrate them. First thing you want to do is get that, that dome or that radius or that, that sphere to work. So we're going to do this. Mostly makes jet-powered pencil sharpeners. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't I wish. So let's get, that, let's, get this, let's get this sphere in there first. Tone. Get the sphere to work. Into the, into the cone. Now those contours are helping me decide where I'm going to put the emphasis. Again, into this, back into the sphere again. Now this little shape in here, this little recess. Back into that, again, getting the sphere to work. Right across that shape. Now, now another form. Now I'm going to change gears. Into that vertical. Into that vertical. Cast a shadow of that sphere on that handle. A little more pressure on it. Get that thing to work. Up and through here, and a little bit more fillet. And again, back and through here. A little bit of shadow, and then release it. Now, if this is recess, let's do this. Come back in and put a little recess in this guy. That's not recessed. I'm going to come back in again. Into shadow, hard shadow. Those are the contours. And into hard shadow, and the contours. And get out of it. Now, the more the drawing definition, and the handle, and the handle, around the corner, recess, in the corner, recess. Again, one more up on top here. Again, these contours that I've already drawn in red are helping me describe this shape beautifully. And there it is. That makes sense now, Brett. Helping. Form is taking form. I'm Brett. Speaking of sharpening, I over sharpened my nine inch pencil and now it reps paper no matter how light I stroke it and I don't want to. Um, yeah, uh, nine inch pencils are really hard to edge, so uh, I'd be very careful. A lot, of, Probably that was just a lot of pressure uh, being put on the sketch itself. Um, so I, I just kind of pull back a little bit there, Brad, and I think you'd be in good shape. So, um, does, does that help to answer your question? I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to rush through that, but is that helping now, gang, to really kind of get this form down? On those section lines, let me just do that in red a little bit more. Come across into this, into the recess, and through that shape, going around it to tell where I am. Again, drawing through it in the other axis to get the sphere to work. Into that, into the handle. Recess, recess, and so on. Into this, recess, recess, and so on. And back into the form, back into the form, and back in one more time, right there. And look at look how those, those contours help me describe that shape. Good? Hey, very cool. Excellent. All right, guys, let's move along here. I'm going to bore you to death and make sure this just really makes sense for us. Let's kind of go back to a little, more, a little bit more form here. 
Just again, just really, really fast little thumbnail sketches here. Nothing fancy. Just going through a whole series of just, just shapes. They're not really products or things. I'm just trying to illustrate again how critical it is to really understand what the surface work does and what these contours begin to do. There's a little thumbnail sketch. It's just a shape. Nothing fancy. Just putting the pieces together. A little recess down the middle. I'm just inventing this stuff as I go just to get the point across about how contour really begins to work. There's my thumbnail sketch right there. Now let's go back in and contour it. Let's pick a point of reference. This one here. Two, three, four, five. Let's get across. Let's go back in perspective. A, one. Very flat. Very flat. Flat. Uh oh. A little radius. Up into that bevel and across and back down again. Let's pick one more up here. Again, into that. Uh oh. Up into that bevel and across. Back and through here. Into that bevel. Up and across. Let's come the other way. Through the center line. Down through the core of that guy and across. Let's pick up one here. Down. Right across that whole point. Now, and through here. Look at that grid pattern, how it helped you to determine what those shapes are doing. Let's come back the other way. Into this, flat, and out of it. Into this, flat, and again, this. Notice that section starts it. Does that. Does that. Does that. That, and also that. There are the contours that set that whole form up. Amazing how it begins to work. Notice again, these, these guys, the horizontals, are going back to a VP. The verticals are just remaining vertical. And again, you put a bit of light source on this guy, I'll just do a real quick little tone work on this thing. We put a light source in from the right-hand side. Let's do this. It'll be this, away from the light source, into that flat and across. Into the fillet. A little bolder. And again, down underneath here, a little bit of tone. Into that fillet. Out of it again. Down below. Again, right back to the light source. Direction. Again, through here. Away from the light source. A little bit of tone underneath there. A little bit of line with a bit of shadow underneath this guy. So it's kind of deepen it just a bit. And through here. And through here. And the rest is all going to light source. Let's go back and just get this guy to read. Right there. Again, this guy. Tone, line. Now, why did I leave that white? Why is that not rendered? Because that surface steps out to the light source. That makes sense? That surface does not have to be toned in. If I want to emphasize that that's a shape change in there, I just do this. All of a sudden, that tells me that that form comes off of that normal surface. Normal surface meaning this. It grows out, therefore it's in the light source. I don't want to illustrate it. It just cleans up the whole mess. There it is. That, that makes sense? Yeah, I read reflected light. That's it. This surface right here is in the direct light source. So therefore, I leave it alone, as is this is direct. That's direct light. This now becomes part of the process of being right in the light source path. So I'm not going to fill it in. If I fill it in, it'll destroy the fact that it's growing off the shape itself. Now, last but not least, come back and let's do this. Away from the light source, a little bit darker. Into that tone there. Again, away from the light source, a little bit darker. Into that, right into that fillet, right out of it. I mean, look how that just defined that shape very simply. Does that help make sense, gang? There we are. Super, super duper. You guys are hanging in there nicely here. So let's go back in here again. Let's finish one little sketch and we'll get this thing all rounded up for you here. Go back into a bob pointer here. Let's go a little bit more, a little bit more linear. Just real fast sketches. Nothing really pressing here. Just getting the shape to work.
There's the form. Just a nice, simple little three-quarter sketch. There we are. Are you improving these shapes? Are you improving? Yes, I am. These are all improvised, uh, Brad. Uh, nothing's been pre-planned and so forth. I just kind of lay down an idea, and, uh, and and it gets to the place where laying down the idea, I hope it gets a message across to you. Yes, it is all improv. Nothing's pre-planned. It's just creating something from my mind and putting it down on paper. All these sketches from the very beginning, that whole family, uh, nothing preconceived, just drawing shapes. And then secondly, getting this page the same way, just drawing shapes, um, improvising all the way. Now, let's, let's go back in and get some contour in this thing. Let's pick a point here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sketches. I'm gonna go horizontal first, right across the form. Across the form, contour, draw through it first. First, draw through it, draw through it, draw through it. Now, let's take advantage of this. That surface drops in, comes across, comes up, and goes over. There's that little slot right there. Same with this, drops in, Comes over, comes up, and then to the. I've just described that slot right there. Does that make sense? Let's turn the corner, roll out of it, roll out of it, roll out of it, out of it. Now it changes. It's much sheer. Look how those contours really help me to tell me, boy, um, I've got a compound shape here, but because these contour lines are telling me where to go. I can begin to now use them as a guide to really do a really good solid illustration or a sketch rendering of these guys. Let me just kind of sharpen this pen a little bit here. Let's come the other way. There's really only one section that matters here. Let's come right down the center line. Up, over the fillet, into that pocket, drop in again. Notice how that highlight just changed and then right over the top of that form right there. That little drop right there is where that recess is. Does that make sense? So there's a family of contour work really working together here with this thing. Now let's go back in again. And just start to really illustrate what the shape is doing. Let's get let's get let's get that really strong feature in place first. There's a recess. There's a line here. Let's come right back in through here. Into the fillet. Back to it again. Let's fill it in here. A little softer from the light source, just painting it in. Again, undercut. Look how the weight changes. Again, the contours are telling me where to place the emphasis, dark and the light. Again, up on top here, fade. Bring it back up again. And the recess. And the recess. Again, a little bit more. Exploratory work on this little fillet here. Underneath, a little bit more core. Line weight shift. No need to fill the other side here. Let's kind of do this. Prefer it. Let's work right back in the light source. Again, the light source is up on top here. I'm going to come right back. Probably gonna turn this thing around here. Pardon me as I lose sight of it. Go back come through here. Underneath. In the light across that fillet, and there it is. That is about as that's about as nitty gritty as I'm going to get with that shape right there. Now, a little bit more form in here, a little more form in through here, a little bit more line weight change here. Again, a really good study in how that contour process really helped to describe what I'm looking at here. In all four cases, the red lines on top of volumetrics, which is contour really helps to describe the shape, which becomes a blueprint for rendering. And the more you understand the volumetric system of life and how they all function, the stronger it's going to get. So there's a family of four right there. What do you think, gang? Eh? Making sense? Anybody have any questions so far? Yeah, once again, uh, Brad, yes, I am improvising. I just have, I'm not habit of going back in and kind of pre-planning certain things. I just kind of let things fly, and if it works, great. If it doesn't, well, blame me. <laughs> let me sharpen the sticks here while I'm waiting. Yeah, I appreciate that, Chip. It is cool. I mean, the, the sketches aren't cool. The concept of the thinking process is what I want to really drive home today. The thinking process is paramount. It's a three-step system. Number one, understand volumetrics. What do spheres do? What do rectangles do? What do cubes do? What do cones do? What do all these things begin to tell us? What are their constitutions? Once you understand them, then you put them in concert, combining some of the shapes together. 
Then you put contour on top of that, which you kind of telegraphs what the shapes are doing. Again, line is to surface, as surface is to form. Well, I make it look easy, which, no, uh, it's a lot of practice, uh, uh, Chip, it really is, with contours, yeah, um, that's true. Uh, Chip's uh, question, you make it look easy, which tells me it, it isn't. Um, no, it isn't easy, but the more you practice it, the more labor-less it becomes. It becomes automatic. You begin to understand, and you become, it becomes a passion for you. You do some really cool stuff. How do you keep yourself from falling in love with the design and keep uh, iterating? Um, uh, I, I keep myself away from falling in love with the design because I'm always looking at uh, the what ifs uh, bets. Um, the what ifs meaning, for example, once I've laid on a concept, uh, what if I change this? What if I change that? What if I begin to move away from a different direction? Maybe it's much more, maybe it's much more linear and less round. Maybe this is rounder and less linear. I'm always changing the paradigm. Um, I guess I, I, you've heard me say this before, Beth, so forgive me for this comment here, but I think it really kind of rings clear. It's a great question. And the answer is this, never fall in love with your work. It leads to a quick divorce. It'll absolutely freeze you. That's why I've, I've trained over the years, and you are as well. You go through an idea, and you then you go through an extrapolation. You go through an idea, you extrapolate it, you change it, you contour it, you change it. You adjust it. You're always telling the story. And, uh, and, and for me, over the years, I don't think I've ever drawn the same thing twice um, as far as a shape is concerned. I've always changed the tempo. Uh, really interesting. Um, it's true. If you fall in love with your work, those of you out there listening, this Bet's had a great question. How do you keep yourself from falling in love with the design and keep liter I iterating? Unbelievable. That's it's right, Shadow. Never settle. The great answer to that question, well, not a great answer, but my best answer to that question about not falling in love with your work, do not fall in love with your work. It leads to a quick divorce. Now, what do you mean by that? What I mean by that is it'll divorce you from the creative process. You fall in love with something that might not be, that might be a failure. It might not be correct. It might not, might not fit the bill for the client's base. You really have to take advantage of let, let being, being very, very lucid, fluid, and open, open uh, from a creative point of view to, to change the tempo. Uh, question again, Doc, what's your approach to drawing heads? Uh, same process, um, drawing heads the same way. It's, it's, it's getting the form down, for example, like we did some time before. Let me get a fresh sheet of paper here, perhaps. The same process. What it comes down to very quickly is this. Let me just kind of put that in place here. When you get back into that contour, it's just it's coming in here. Changing the whole shape, drawing through it, drawing through it again, adding that, coming back in and getting hairline established, drawing through it again, contour, in the contour, in the contour. And before you know it, you've got it. There it is. That makes sense? I've been trimming this head for two weeks now. I can't for the, or got to get it right. Well, I would I would try going back again with this whole process here. Actually lay down the shape. Adjust the shape. Draw through it. Draw through it. Draw through it. Come back and pick up the contours. What are you after here? In the contour. In the eye socket. In the eye socket. In the lips. In the chin. In the ear. In the neck. So forth. And the hairline. And all of a sudden, look at, look at the difference here. I mean, I'm just generating shape there as I go. We'll call 181623, in search of followers, primes and views, come and be go. Oh, okay. Who I know who that is. I've been trying. Is, that, is this helping, um, Brett? It's contouring it. Again, it's, it's taking that same basic shape right there, modifying it, finding where the elements are, drawing through the proportions, picking that up. Into the, into the brow, nose structure. Just, just blocking in elements first. In the chin surface. Now notice, look, look, look how much ground you're gaining right there as a result of really knowing where you're going. Sounds like a bot. Oh, that, yeah, it was a bot, probably. Uh, <laughs> I hope that else helps answer your question there, uh, Brad. I mean, that's a very sensitive subject matter. Uh, very cool, J.D. I haven't seen you draw people. Yeah, it's, I, do, I do a lot of that, um, I bets. I do a lot of figure work. I'll do a lot of illustration work, but I don't do a lot of it from the teaching side and the design side of life because it's really not something that uh, 
we really work with a lot of. But when I get into composition, like for aircraft or for uh, uh, automotive illustration work or some conceptual work, I always put people in there for scale. It's almost like an old throwback to what Legacy and Sid Mead did uh, back in the day. So um, I don't use a lot of it because I've not had a lot of requests for it, but um, it's something we should maybe look into in future uh, generations here. So. Very interesting stuff. So again, it's that same gesture, I think, um, Brad. To go this route and see what happens with it. I think it'll be in great shape. So let's go back to the, the wrap up here. There it is. Uh, let's go back to phase one. Again, I uh, really want to stress the fact today's stream was wrapping things up and making sure that three things we've held absolutely paramount. Number one, understand volumetrics. Each one of these goofy shapes are all set up on understanding how to combine forms and volumetrics. Number two, oh, let's see, I'll give it a shot. Well, I'm going to see. Uh, have a great day, Brett. Thanks very much. Um, again, combination thereof, once you get the, uh, the um, uh, forms down and the, the volumetrics in place, contour it. Then begin to use that as a battle plan, for example, to illustrate. There's phase one, there's phase two, and it just comes together very nicely. And I want to add just a little bit, just kind of combine the forms here. Let's do this to get that across, to get these shapes to kind of work in harmony. The family of forms, there it is. And guilty. Add my signature to it so no one else gets accused with me. There we are. I'll kind of finish up a little bit later. So once again, thank you so much for all of you who are tuning in here. I uh, really enjoyed the uh, the session today. I hope you did as well. Uh, again, just a very a very good quick wrap up again of where we were last Tuesday. But again, getting into contour and surfaces. Uh, very interesting uh, work here. I, I, I'm, I'm intrigued by it. It always it's infinite. It's just absolutely inspiring and it's infinite. It's just great to work with here. So. Once again, gang, thank you so much for the time. Uh, the book is done, thanks to Pixel. We've got it all set to go. We're getting ready to put it up on our website and uh, we'll get that organized for you. Uh, we'll keep you posted on the status of that. Uh, Pixel did a tremendous job and, and he knows that. Uh, really uh, um, terrific talent, so I, I, a lot of my respect for what he does. And uh, Betts, thanks so much uh, for all uh, for all, you've, uh, all your time. And please tune in tomorrow. I'll be back on tomorrow at 4 o'clock, hopefully. Hope you're having a great day. Tell Sam I said hello. Love you guys and miss you. And Pixelate, laugh out loud, my signature, so no one else gets accused of me. <laughs> I'm stealing that one. My signature, so no one accuses me of stealing. So once again, gang, thanks so much for your time today. And uh, I will sign off with this. If I've said something right, tell me. If I've said something wrong, tell me. And please uh, take a look at, uh, if you have any messages you want to send me, uh, please feel free to reach me at jim at drcontrast.com. Uh, also, I've got a great lesson plan out there and they're called drcontrast.com. It's a drawing program. Uh, it's uh, really interesting how it all comes together. So if you have any friends who are interested in drawing, uh, please have them advise them to that. Oh, yeah. Hey, uh, Bats, love you too. Thank you so much. Uh, you guys have been terrific. You missed. You're greatly missed. Uh, cool, uh, child doc. Thanks a lot, uh, Chip. And I was close with this, uh, folks. Uh, thank you so much for the time today. It's been a lot of fun to be with you. It's an honor to be a part of the process here. And I'll sign off with this because I think it's absolutely paramount. Never forget to remember to dare to be great because you are. All the very best, gang. Take care. Have a great day. Thank you. All the best. Bye-bye.